my friends and welcome to Practice English with Paul. Today is Cambridge FCE preparation. Many people on YouTube have asked for my help and I'm going to answer your calls. I'm going to give you my advice and I'm going to make videos on everything about FCE. Now we're going to start with my top tips for passing FCE reading. I am sure many of you have already looked online for advice and you saw things like read instructions carefully, pay attention to the time limits, be relaxed, enjoy the experience. Well, thank you, but no thanks. I mean, it's not the most helpful advice. Students want to know how to pass the tasks, right? And I'm going to give you my advice, and if you follow my advice, it will make the difference between failing and passing with an A, okay? It's simple as that. But before we have a look at my wonderful tips, let's take a look at what the FCE exam, or the reading part of the exam, actually looks like and then we'll come back. So here we are my friends, we have Reading and Use of English Part 5, it's the first one out of the three. As you can see, it looks quite large, but it's really not that bad to be honest. We have six multiple choice questions below, uh, with four options A, B, C, D. Now if I scroll back up, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, question one of course will be somewhere around the first paragraph, and question six will be somewhere towards the end. Now I know that seems obvious, but I'm trying to draw your attention to the fact that the questions are not mixed up, so it kind of follows a logical order. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we have part six. Um, as you can see, text, and we have six sentences that have been removed. Now, if we have a look at the options here, you will see that there are seven. So one of them we don't need which is very kind of Cambridge because they're trying to confuse us. But that's how they test our English. Generally, I find that um, students don't like this one because if you get, say, two wrong answers in, say, say 37, 38, you can mess up the entire task, to be honest. And that's why students don't like it. But again, I'm going to make some videos on each one, on each task, and I'm going to explain strategies for completing these successfully, so don't worry. Okay, let's move on to part seven. Now, I like part seven. Um, we have 10 statements here, as you can see, uh, numbered 43 to 52. And uh, we have here uh, normally four paragraphs, sometimes five, but here for some reason we have six. It's not very common to find six, but basically what you do it's as you read these sort of paragraphs, you have to say like which statement is found in which paragraph. So this could be like D, this could be A, this could be D, B, C, whatever. Um, uh, I, I tend to tell students to complete this reading task first because you can basically really mess it up. So dedicate your time to this one. Um, I've, I'm going to make a video on how to successfully pass this one because I have some very good strategies. So that's it, okay? Uh, it's fairly obvious. Um, it takes about, on average, 30 minutes or so to complete these three tasks. Students tend to complete use of English pretty quickly, so they end up having more time to do the reading anyway. So let's go back to the studio. So welcome back. Let's have a look at number one. Now, I know it's obvious, but pay attention to detail in the questions as well as the text. For example, in uh, let's say part six where you have the sentences to put into the paragraphs, look for those grammatical connections. If the uh, in the last part of the paragraph it's singular, the answer is not going to be plural. It's not going to have a plural pronoun. That doesn't grammatically work. Um, if, for example, uh, in the part five, the question has some, uh, some time relating to the past, and in a text it's going to be present, that's probably not going to be the answer. Uh, you have to really look for just contextual and grammatical connections. So you need to learn to be analytical. You need to analyze the language and play with it. Um, because so many students make basic mistakes that when we correct the uh, tasks, they go, oh yeah, it was answer A. And I say, well, why didn't you choose it? Oh, I wasn't careful enough. Oh, because it said he in the question and the text said she. I needed to read further. Exactly. Be careful. Number two, distractors. I hate these things. Distractors comes from the verb to distract. This, the FCE exam and actually all Cambridge exams 
try to confuse you. They try to sort of point you in that direction to get it wrong. And so the idea is, if you know English well enough, then you know not to get distracted and you know to kind of analyze the detail and go, uh huh, it's answer A. Um, and so, for example, in a question, you might have, say, four options and you might see these four options in the text, but the question might say he, but in the text it's she, 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 she he, ah, the last one, and therefore, of course, it's answer D. All right, so, you know, again, don't answer the first point that you come across. Again, be careful, pay attention, and don't let yourself get distracted. Okay, confidence and being, you know, focused is the key here. Number three, so many students make mistakes with this. It's unbelievable. Don't make a story out of nothing. So many students, on every course they've done this. What that means, if they're reading the text, and the text says, John and Mary have been happy together their entire lives. And the student goes, oh, it's answer A, because they're married. And I say to the student, where in the text does it say that they're married? Well, that's what it means, because they've been happy together their entire lives. But together can mean as work colleagues or as best friends. But no, it, it means that they're married. Sorry, that's your understanding, but does it say in the text that they're married? No, then that's not the answer, because the word married or any synonym of being married is not there. So that's not the answer. All right. Again, don't fall for that trap. OK, you, you need imagination for FCE, for the speaking, for the writing, but not for this. The language is there or it's not. It's as simple as that. And again, if you've been practicing and studying hard enough, your English will be good enough to understand that. Number four, read as much as you can in preparation for the FCE exam. You can't just go to the FCE without having read nothing. It's not going to happen. It will not happen at all. Now, I like BBC online materials, but when you read online, say, news articles, don't just read the news. Read culture, environment, technology, sport. Get used to reading about bits of different vocabulary from different genres. That way you'll really build up your reading skills and it's very important. Also, I like these little books. Uh, these are called the Oxford Bookworm. Okay, and I have got, I have mentioned these in some other videos. This one actually comes with uh, CDs to also help your listening. And again, this one is level, I think, upper intermediate. You can get advanced, super advanced. You can find these on Amazon.com or go to Oxford University Press's website. I'll put the address down below so you can check it out and you can find these yourself. They're not difficult to find. OK, just read, read, read and read. And don't forget, when you're preparing to do the FCE reading, you need an FCE trainer or practice tests. You really need to practice as much as you can. All right. And the last one, my friends, follow my videos on techniques to pass each part of the exam. I'm about to make some other videos on FCE reading to help you for the specific parts. OK, and my techniques. Um, subscribe so you don't miss any. Give a thumbs up. Write your comments below. Maybe you would like to see something very, very soon rather than wait like a few weeks later. And I'll happily reply and I'll see what I can do. So, my friends, it's the 8th of March today. If you celebrate Women's Day, whichever country you're in, happy Women's Day. Take care. I'm now going to watch some kitten and puppy videos on YouTube. Goodbye.